Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 10.2, Simplifying Radical Expressions, Part 1. We are going to back it up a little bit here about a year ago where we first learned 3 times 3, we can represent that as 3 squared, yes? And 3 squared is 9. Now today we are going to be working with radicals or square roots, and so that blue thing right here is a square root. We are taking the square root of 9. Well, the square root of 9 could be represented as the square root of 3 squared. Yes, do you agree? Because we took 3 times 3, which is 3 squared. Well, now this square root undoes that square, this red little 2. So now if the square root undoes the square, we are left with just a 3. So the square root of 9 is 3. Same thing with 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is 5 squared. 5 squared is 25. Well, what is the square root of 25? 25 can be written as 5 squared. The square root of 5 squared would just be 5. How about x's? x times x is x squared. Then the square root of x squared would just be x because the square root undoes the square. Now let's take a look at our perfect squares. What are perfect squares? The perfect squares here are what is in the blue, right? These are the numbers that are perfect squares. So 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, 169, 196, 225 are all perfect squares and this list would continue, right? It continues infinitely, keeps going on and on. But these blue numbers are what we care about today. These blue numbers are what we are going to be using today. I cannot say that enough. These blue numbers are what we are going to be using today. What do these problems look like? Here with number one, we are asked to simplify. Very first thing we want to do is to see if we have 81 on our list or whatever goes into 81 evenly. Whatever goes into 81 evenly. So. First thing, I'm going to go down to see if I can find 81. Well, how about that? I found 81. The square root of 81 is 9 because 9 times 9 is 81. So the square root of 81 is 9. How about the square root of 48? Well, is 48 on the list? No, it is not on the list. So now we are asked to find what goes into 48 evenly. So I'm going to start with the next number below 48. So 36 would be below 48. Does 36 go into 48 evenly? It does not. 25? No. 16, however, does go into 48. 16 goes into 48 three times. So it would be 3 times 16 is 48. Right? We're using these blue numbers. Now, after you rewrite the problem like this, guys, I have to see this step. Guys and girls, I have to see that step. The square root of 16 is what? The square root of 16 is 4. And now do we know what the square root of 3 is? No, we do not. So our simplified answer is going to be 4 square root 3. Same thing here with the square root of 72. First thing we have to do, is there 72 on the list? No, there is not. Now we want to find the next number that goes into 72 evenly. So, 64, no. 49, no. How about 36? Yes, 36 does. So we can represent 72 as 2 times 36, all right? Because 2 is a number, a whole number, that's why we can have 36 times 2 be 72. Can we touch this 2? No, we cannot because we do not know what the square root of 2 is. But we do know that the square root of 36 is 6. So I'm going to take this 36 and pull it out. So when we pull it out, the square root of 36 turns into 6. So it's going to be 6. And then we did not touch that 2, so we just leave it as the square root of 2. With 4, now we have 3 times, that we could put a time sign here if you want, 3 times the square root of 27. Well, I'm going to rewrite this as... 3, and then the square root of, now, what perfect square goes into 27? Is 27 on our list? No, it is not on our list because it goes from 25 to 36. There is no 27. So now we have to find a number that goes into 27 evenly. 16 doesn't, does 9. Yes, it does. 9 goes into 27 three times. 
So I take that 3 times 9 because 3 times 9 is 27. Now, the square root of 9 is what? Is 3. So I write that down. I'm also going to bring what's inside my square root down. What number did I forget about so far? I forgot about this 3. So I'm also going to bring that 3 down. Well, here, how is this 3 attached to the square root of 27? It was attached through what? Multiplication. So this 3 and this 3 are attached through multiplication. So now I have 3 times 3, which is 9. Bring down the square root of 3. Now I want to be careful here because this is the answer right here. It is 9 because it's 3 times 3 and not because this 9. It is 9 here because it's 3 times 3. Let's try some more. Now with 5 we have the square root of 2 times the square root of 48. Well you'll kinda like these guys because if you have two numbers inside the radicals you have to multiply the numbers inside the radicals. So we'll have the square root of 48 because 2 times 24 is 48. Now we want to find factors of 48 or does is 48 a perfect square? No it is not so now we want to find a perfect square that is a factor. So these blue numbers, using the blue numbers, what blue numbers go into 48? 16 does. So 48 is the same thing as 3 times 16. Well, 16 turns into the square root of 4. So 16 comes out in front of the square root, turns into a 4 times the square root of 3 because we did not touch that. So it's 4 times the square root of 3 for our final answer. Same thing with number 6. Both numbers are inside the square root. So you can multiply them, the, them together. So it's the square root of 50. Is 50 a perfect square? It is not because it's not on our list. Now we need to find the next biggest number that goes into 50 evenly. Right? Evenly with no decimal. Well, 36 doesn't. Does 25? Yes, 25 goes in there twice. So then we have 2 times 25. The square root of 25 is what? The square root of 25 is right here, 5. So it's 5. And then what did we not use? We did not use the square root of 2. So it's 5 times the square root of 2. Now with 7. 7 is a little bit different because we have a number outside. This number here is outside. This number here is outside. We also have a number inside. This 5 and this 5. We multiply the numbers outside the square root to get 12 and then we have to multiply the numbers inside the square root to get the square root of 25. Now this 12 is fine because it is not inside the square root. This 25 we're looking for the square root of 25. Is 25 on our list? Yes it is. The square root of 25 is 5. So now what does this square root of 25 turn into? I take it out of the square root. It turns into a 5. I bring down that 12. What do I have to do with the 12 and the 5? How is this 12 attached to the square root of 25? Through multiplication. So I'm going to multiply these two numbers to get 12 times 5 which is 60 for our final answer. 60 is the answer. Now, you can skip this step, but I do need to see this step in your work. Skip that one, but I need to see that one. Number 8, same situation applies here. 3 times what number is in front of that square root of 5? It's just a 1 because there is only 1 square root of 5. So it's 3 times the square root of, then 4 times 5 is 20. Now, we need to simplify 20. So it's 3 times the square root of what what uh, perfect square goes into 20? 20 is not a perfect square. Does 16? No, 9, no, 4 does. 4 goes in there 5 times. So it's going to be 5 times 4. 3 stays out there. I'm going to take out that 4. When you take out that 4, what does it turn into? Be very careful because it turns into a 2. The square root of 4 is 2. And then we also have the square root of 5. What do we have to do with this 3 and the 2? We have to multiply, so it's going to be 6 square root 5 for our final answer. Here we go. Four more. You 
can do it. Hang in there. Number nine. Now, please remember, going back to our first page, that the square root of x squared was x. There's also like a 2 right here, so we can look at this as exponents. When we have exponents, this square divided by 2 is just a single x, right? Or the square root of x squared is just x. Now, why I put this 2 here, though, is because when we have higher exponents than 2, well, if we would divide these exponents, right, we would have y squared. So 2 divided by 2 is just 1 right here, and then 4 divided by 2 is just 2, which we have here, so our simplified answer now is xy squared, or if you will, xy squared. Now, what if the exponent is odd? Well, how many times does this 2 go into a 5? That 2 goes in there 2 times, so I'm going to take out that c squared, right? Well, if I have 5 divided by 2, what's my remainder going to be? It's going to be 2, so it's going to be 4. I subtract here to get 1, so it's 2 remainder 1. So if you have a remainder, that remainder is going to go inside that square. Square root, I'm sorry. It's inside that square root. So our an simplified answer here is going to be c squared times the square root of c. Now with number 11, just more letters and throwing in numbers. Very first thing we want to do is to break apart that 90. Well, what is a perfect square that goes into 90? 90 is not a perfect square. Any of these guys go into 90. Yes, they do. 9 does. So it's going to be 10 times 9. And then we also have x, cu or, yeah, x cubed, y to the 4th, z to the 5th. And all of this jargon is inside the square root. So let's start pulling things out. This 9 comes out and turns into a 3. Now this x cubed comes out. How many can come out? 2 goes in there how many times? Just once. y to the 4th comes out and turns into y squared because 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then this 5 comes out and it's z also squared. This is a z right here, sorry. And now, what's left inside the square root? What did we not use? We didn't use this 10. Okay? So that goes inside the square root. Now, did we use all of this x here? No, we did not. We only we had a 3. We brought out 2 of them. So we're left with an x inside. Did we use all of this 4? 4 divided by 2 is 2. Yes, we did. 5 divided by 2 is not just a 2. What's our remainder? 5 divided by 2 is 2, remainder 1. So I'm going to put that remainder inside the square root. And so our final answer, or our simplified answer, is going to be in Christmas colors. And it is right here. 3xy squared, z squared, times the square root of 10xz. Final, final, answer, or final question here is number 12, same situation. Let's rewrite this 45 as perfect squares. So it's going to be... What is 45 a perfect square? It is not. Well, what blue number goes into 45? Not 16, but 9 does. 9 goes in there 5 times. Then I also have a to the 4th, b to the 5th, and c to the 6th. We start taking out some things. 9 comes out and turns into a 3. Remember, there's a 2 sitting here. 4 divided by 2 is 2, so a squared comes out evenly. 5 divided by 2 is 2 with the remainder of what? With the remainder of 1. And then c to the 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3, so it's c to the 3rd. Now what is left inside the square root? We did not touch the 5, so the 5 is still there. The 4 is all gone because it's even. 5. What is our remainder with 5? It is going to be a 1, so it's b. And then do we have remainder with 6? No, we do not. So now our final answer is 3a squared b squared c cubed times the square root of 5b. Notice how the only variables left inside the square root are just an exponent of 1. That's a point I want to point out. But that does it for section 10.2, Simplifying Radical Expressions, Part 1. Good day!